So hello, welcome back to the Kia Soul. We're stopped at Junction, we're in Vegas. We're on Rainbow Boulevard, South Rainbow Boulevard. And we're heading back towards our apartment. As we do so, we're answering, we s well, <laughs> we hope. Yeah, I haven't been too bad, have I? No, you've been week? very good, actually. No. Uh, I've managed to find uh, our way around. Um, yeah, so we're heading back to the apartment. But as we do, oh, grab our blue. <laughs> yes. That's been happening a lot yeah. on this trip. It's, it's, Sorry. Like that, it's like Disney's, it's like Pixar's up. It's like, squirrel! <laughs> <Must die. laughs> uh, right, so the big question is, is OLED still the future of television now that Samsung have come out with their announcement of micro-LED? Is OLED's future, uh, is, is, it in, is it in danger? But yes, if you're talking OLED as the future of TV, uh, right at this moment in time, yes, it is. Does it have issues? Yes, it does. Um, the main issue is usually uh, the user not respecting the technology or not understanding the technology. Um, the thing is you don't buy an OLED TV and stick it in a sunny room and then shove the brightness and everything else up to maximum on, on the TV because it's not designed for that and if that is what you're doing you are going to get image retention, you're going to get screen burn. If the TV is set up correctly in the cinema mode or in the ISF expert modes if it's an LG on the Panasonic's, um, they have THX mode, yeah. but they also have other cinema modes one and, and professional one and two. Set them up in those modes, set them up to your room brightness, uh, contrast and brightness set to the conditions, and you should have no issues whatsoever in terms of image retention and screen burn, unless you leave the screen on Sky News or on a video game for a very, very long time. As long as you take care of the screen, these things are not an issue whatsoever. The problem is users not understanding that and abusing the screen, overdriving the panel. Not abusing the screen, just overdriving the panel because they don't understand that or they haven't read up on it or it's not explained to them. And therefore, they get image retention and in very rare cases, they get image burn. Yes. Yeah, I, I would describe OLED as the present of television, actually. I mean, it was called the future when it was still a developing technology, it's here now. It's supported by every manufacturer. I mean, granted, it's only made by one manufacturer, but it's supported by every manufacturer apart from one obvious one, which is Samsung. But um, but yes, it's, it's here now. It's widely available. Last year was a particularly strong year for OLED because there were a number of different models from different manufacturers and the price points got down really low. Before Christmas, you could pick up a B7 for about £1,699, which, you know, that is a mass market price point. So it's, it's reached a point where people know about it, you know, among, not just out in the enthusiast community, but also in the wider community. People know about OLED, people are buying OLED, it's sold really well, um, and it delivers a fantastic picture. I, I own an OLED TV, every time I put it on, I think that looks really good. It yeah. looks fantastic. So it's the, it's the present of television now, it's, it's there, it's, it's available, and it delivers a superb performance. And for what our current content is, it's perfect. Because, it, you know, I mean, the majority of content, even if it says it's 4,000 nits, is not going to be using 4,000 nits much. Um, most of it's going to be much less than 1,000 nits. And, and obviously an OLED can deliver up to 1,000 nits peak brightness, particularly since it's capable of delivering that, those highlights at a pixel level. Um, and also, obviously, the deep blacks, and it can do 100% of DCI P3, so it can deliver a very, uh, you know, an excellent performance for where we are right now, and it's it's a great, great, great system, a great uh, technology. Where it maybe it's going to have an issue is that it's basically at its peak now. It's it's reached the, the point that it's been developed to the point where it can do what it can do, um, and as we do move on, in terms of um, grading things to higher peak brightnesses maybe wider colour spaces as well at some point, then that's when it's going to be, they'll be looking at other technologies. And those other technologies do exist. They're, they're being showcased at the show, specifically micro-LED, self-emissive LED technology. Um, and that, that's ultimately, I guess, where the future may well lie. Um, so is it the future of, te of TV? Well, probably not now. It's the present of television. It is television as it is right now, and it's still, as things currently stand, the best picture quality you'll get, certainly, um, for your money. Yeah, I'd agree with you on that one. There's still a place for LCD TVs as well Absolutely. in the marketplace. Like I say, if you if you have a, a sunny room, um, a conservatory, something like that, where you're not going to be able to you know, get the best out of an OLED in, or, or even see an image of an OLED <laughs> in a room like that, that's where LCD TVs are at their best. Um, full array backlit TVs, 
there's more of them coming along this yeah, year, which, is, which is good to see. Um, they have their place in the marketplace as well. I mean, it's not just about one technology. If it was about, about one technology, like it used to be in the CRT days, then there's not there's not really much um, scope there to to find something that that's going to suit your environment or particular environments. Whereas if you've got plenty of choice and you've got different technologies where they have different strengths and weaknesses, it gives you more choice. And, and you know, I would never say no to an LCD TV. Certain LCD TVs perform exceptionally well. OLED is phenomenal for movie watching and SDR content. Would it be my first choice for HDR? In a darkened room where I have full light control, yes. If I don't have those things, then no, I'd go in with an LCD full array backlit yeah. TV. So, you know, I, I don't think there has to be one technology to rule them all. Is it the future? Like you say, it's the present. I think the future's interesting to see where we go with micro LED. And I'm sure there'll be developments of that technology that'll be called slightly different things. Um, will that be the future? That's, that's the interesting question, isn't it? Yeah. What is the future? So, uh, we hope you've enjoyed our coverage of CES 2018. I hope you enjoy these little opinion pieces as we just cruise around Vegas in our really trendy Kia Soul. <laughs> um, the, the power is phenomenal. I mean, you've, you've probably seen umpteen vehicles passing us uh, on a regular basis. It's, I'm getting used to it now. It's being also fast. the ugliest car, I think. It I've is, seen. yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it, I, equally, I'm a big fat person and I'm sat in the back of it and I haven't complained once. Uh, Mainly it, because there's a giant cup of my beer as well. Yeah, but it does affect the handling, Ed. Uh, when the car is. No, kind of... no, my weight's between the axles. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thank you very much for watching. Uh, do subscribe and come back and see us again.